Who knows what true loneliness is? Not the conventional word, but the naked terror. To the lonely themselves it wears a mask. The most miserable outcast hugs some memory or some illusion. Joseph Conrad. Portal 2 is a first-person puzzle platforming game released in 2011 by Valve. Riding off of the massive success of its predecessor, Portal 2 continues to redesign the typical first-person shooter game as you play through hostile environments with only a portal gun at your side. Welcome to Aperture Science Testing Facility, where cameras, deadly lasers, and giant murderous computers abound. Oh, and you're completely alone, a fact that no one seems to want you to forget. Even as the game unfolds before you, portals and puzzles, turrets, buttons, and bridges made of light, this sci-fi world is empty, empty of any true human connections. As defined by a study by Heather Gilmartin of the University of Colorado, isolation can be boiled down to three concepts, sensory deprivation, social isolation, and confinement. While sensory deprivation does not really have any influence in the game, no one would enjoy sitting in front of a black screen for hours. Portal 2 explores isolation and its effects on the human psyche through the visual and auditory environment that the player experiences on the journey through the facility. As you traverse the many test chambers, the only social interactions you have are with two different AIs and an audio recording. Lovable idiot Wheatley, diabolically insidious GLaDOS, and the bombastic recordings of the deceased Cave Johnson. Each of these alternate between tormenting and supporting you at different phases of the game. As these are your only sources of social interaction, they provide welcome contact and acknowledgement. However, this acknowledgement is generally not positive, ranging from never-ending passive-aggressive remarks, especially about your weight and abandonment. This weight must not be calibrated to someone of your generousness. I'll add a few zeros to the maximum weight. To neurotoxin and giant murder spikes. This does tend to put a damper on any friendliness you might feel towards the three test controllers. When the only possible way to see a friendly face is with clever portal positioning to get a peek at your own, there is no other way to define this constant tirade of abuse than bullying. The main perpetrator of this is GLaDOS, but Wheatley tries as well after he replaces her, and even the recording of Cave Johnson takes a few swings. The passive aggressive and general humor that is practically omnipresent through the game adds to the charm of each character, even if it's not positive. You know how I'm going to live forever, but you're going to be dead in 60 years? Well, I've been working on a belated birthday present for you. Well, more of a belated birthday medical procedure. Well, technically, it's a medical experiment. What's important is it's a present. This serves to develop each as a fully-fledged personality, which makes it only worse when you destroy every bridge you think you've built with them. By building up the personalities to the two, AIs letting the player grow like them in some manner then throwing away all those connections Portal 2 pushes the player to be let down to be isolated from other beings sharing the facility with you to be isolated from any social connections. Speaking of the facility, Portal 2 takes place in two different environments. The sterile modern top layer of the facility appearing in the beginning and the end and then the older rusting original facility underneath it in the middle of the story. Though there are massive, and I mean massive, gaps, pits, and open spaces, the actual testing occurs in fairly constrained areas. That is, there are hardly, there's hardly anywhere to go outside of the tests. You are corralled, controlled by the environment, pushed forward through the tests and game, with only the occasional detour that does not result in furthering the story. You are subject to the other aspect of isolation, confinement. In this case, not physical restraints, but geographical confinement defined as involuntary limitations to where you can travel. Being forced through this linear path, though colossal in size, is lonely. At the end of each test, there's a small elevator waiting for you, signifying the fact that no matter what you do, you have no choice where to go next. You are confined to go wherever the current controller of the facility wants you to go. There may be miles and miles of locations at the facility, doors hundreds of feet high and enough rooms to employ a small town, but there's only one person in it, you, and there's only one way to go, wherever the test leads you. Even if a prison cell is massive, if you can't leave, it's still a prison. In this madhouse, you are the only human alongside stacks of rubble, rambling robots, and laser puzzles. Studies on prisoners in solitary confinement, isolated from human connections, show that after time, prisoners start going crazy, hallucinating figures and growing very attached to whatever they have left, all from the lack of basic human interactions. Being alone by choice can be therapeutic, but being alone by force is detrimental to the human psyche. Even at the very end, the final time you are confined by an outside force, 
You are put in an elevator that takes you to the surface. You are even serenaded by the turrets as you rise through a huge distance, getting another view of the size of the facility, filled to the brim by singing inhuman robots. As you rise to the surface and take your first steps in, into a field of wheat, there is an interesting duality created. There is still the feeling of isolation, not as a single sign of civiliz civilization in sight. But now, you can have hope and joy that there is no longer an outside force keeping you alone. You may have noticed that we keep referring to the player as you, Mr. and Mrs. Audience Member, and trust me, it is intentional. Unlike many other games, your, your character in Portal 2, aka Shell, spelled with a C, is quite literally a blank slate, or should I say, a hollow shell. Not only do you experience the game through her eyes, you dictate all of her reactions to whatever is currently occurring, as she has none. There is never a cutscene where Shell takes action on her own cord, never does she talk, never does she emote or provide any information to us. People tend to act in line with their game avatars, rather than how they would personally react to stimuli. This is defined as the Proteus effect by Nikki E, where your video game avatar affects how you play the game. If you're a cowboy, you'll probably go all guns a blazing, while if you're a ninja, you'll play it a lot sneakier, hiding behind walls and such. So as you play through Portal 2, Shell's vibrant personality and robust opinions color your experience of the game. Oh, oh wait. wait. When GLaDOS hints that she has found your parents, it's not Shell who is simultaneously anxious yet hopeful. It's you. There's no protective cover between the game and yourself. Shell provides no hints on how you should react. No personality, no ideas, just an empty shell. Her backstory consists of not having parents, aka no connections, and a hidden name on a science product. project. GLaDOS and Wheatley also contribute to this, as they never call you by your name, always addressing you directly as, well, you. As a matter of fact, the only obvious place where the name Shell is used is in the credits of the game. When GLaDOS finally reveals her grand surprise, it is up to you to how you feel. When Le Wheatley pops up in the beginning portions of the game offering assistance, it is you who feels loneliness offset with hope. It is you who feels betrayed when Wheatley, well, betrays you. It's you who probably feels isolated and scared when you are going up practically a practically omnipresent god, a stupid one, powerful nonetheless, with a pair of boots and a portal gun with a 1.5 volt potato stuck to it like a lumpy bayonet. It rests solely on your shoulders to experience the game, to witness the vast spaces and empty rooms, to be befriended and harassed by GLaDOS and Wheatley, not necessarily in that order. With practically no backstory, no independent actions, seemingly no mind of her own, Shell is not a distinct character. She solely offers a shell through which you can experience the visual and auditory environment of the game. Portal 2 is a video game. No, well, it's a comedy with jokes. And, well, it's really a look at how extreme isolation affects people. And it's also a science fiction story, but it's also a post-apocalyptic survival story. And, well, really, it's a video game. Unlike most other forms of media and literature, video games allow for you to personally experience what the character is going through because the environment and sound can be made in an interactive way. By making the main character an empty shell for you to fill, Valve creates Portal 2 in a way to emphasize these ideas of isolation through social isolation and confinement directly on the player. But ultimately, it is how you play the game that defines how it impacts on you.